So um, I'm going to be going over some areas in which I connect with students that are in developmental ed courses. Uh, we, uh, in our department, work with the TSI students that are liable in reading, writing, and math. We also have special mission students that we work with. And then we also have programming for students that are on suspension in the morning where we do an I-68 program where we meet with them monthly. So, so we have several different things that we do in our, in our office. So um, I'm Diane Rodriguez and I work on Bevers and, and uh, uh, this is it basically just how the students check, check into the office and um, uh, get, in your, get, your, get into EAB and then you're in the kiosk uh, area and then we get our students to check in. So just looking at the check-in, they put in their student ID number or they do the swipe. If the swipe doesn't work, then they, they manually put in their ID number. And then they have selections on what they want to do today in our office. Uh, we have an advisor that works with the College of Education. And so that's on there. We have our TSI, special admissions. There's some other categories on there that we used in the past, not so much. But uh, so the one that I'm going to be looking at is the ones that we do with the developmental students. And so our student will pick uh, TSI, and then as they, they, when they come in, they want to check in with uh, an appointment. If they have an appointment already set, preset already, then there'll be something will pop up, and it'll say check in. And so it's just automatic, automatically put them in, and they already have an appointment with Ms. Rather or myself or Ms. Parham in our office. Uh, if they want to make an appointment, they can do that too. And so they have that set that selection and then go on the waiting list. A lot of times we have students coming in and they just check in for, for uh, to be added to the waiting list that we're available. And um, then as they choose that selection, then they move on to selecting which advisor they need to see. And then uh, we have our name, they pick Diane Rodriguez, and then I'm available, and then they're done. So then I get a cue saying, hey, uh, Jacoby is waiting for me. And so Jacoby is here, and then I have this on the screen where it pops up, has a little number. If you have more than one student waiting, it'll be on there as well. And so as he comes into my office, we start our appointment, and then there's the advising report. And so this is where we put in all the information on what we discussed. Uh, if we're just doing maybe the TSI advising, we put in the information on what map they need to be in. Uh, for instance, this semester we were doing the advising for Paul, and so if they were enrolled in Math 0303, then we, we tell them they need to move into the next level and you have to make a specific grade um, develop a course, you have to make C or, C or better, or you will have to read on that course. And so the hope is to get them to that next level, of course, and then we file a report and they just move on. And so uh, that's just the basic coming into the office, and we do this every day. Advisors and other departments do the same thing. So this is just kind of the basic things I just kind of need to show everyone those screens. Okay, moving on. Uh, this is one thing that I love so much is the advanced search. You can uh, target specific categories of students. I work with looking at mentor grades or final grades and seeing what, where the students are at a specific time. Whenever they're in my office, and I'm advising them, I can also see their midterm grades, so they came after midterm grades. And how are you doing in that? Uh, is, a, is a question I ask lots of times, and then some of the students will say, oh, yeah, I'm doing great, I'm passing. I say, well, are you really? Your midterm grade says you have a D right now. Is that passing, really? You know, I don't think that's so great. And so then I go into the questions, um, do you need support? Have you been going to your SI sessions, those after math sessions that they're required to go to? Uh, oh, yeah, I've been going to those. Uh, I click on history, and oh, you have. I don't see your name as attending those sessions. So there's, very, there's lots of things that we can find out on, on those screens, and so it's very helpful. And just advising students, you know whether they're going to sessions, if they've gone to the uh, study school sessions, they have study school sessions that are uh, students that, are, that we mentor or coach, uh, they are required to attend certain sessions and certain numbers. And so we can always check on the history and see if they went to those sessions because they have to check in for those sessions. So all the little extra things 
that we have for them to attend, there's tracking on it, and you can look at all the tracking on them as long as they, they were able to, to connect correctly. And, uh, and then if you don't have your kiosk working, your computer's not working, then you can always add in those, those uh, students in if you have a sign-in sheet. So that's something that can happen if you have trouble with the kiosk or the, your computer, because there's always central things here and there. Okay, so these are the different categories that I look at, and uh, uh, we have student information such as tags, gender, you can go by student ID names, you can go by uh, courses, and on the next screen, um, so this is the one I have to use, is I can look at my TSI math students and uh, the ones that are enrolled in a specific term and see what grades they've made and if I need to send some information to you. And I don't know if you can see my, my screen very well, but I could be very specific to a class or to a section, those kind of things. Um, Special admission students, I can choose my special admission students. Those are students that I see every semester, and they have to see me one, at least once a semester to get their hold off to register for the, for the next semester. And so I can look and see if they have a hold and send a message out to all of those students and get that search and send a message say, hey, you have a special admission at the hold, you need to come by and see me, or you need to be register. And so they can get that message by email, and most of the students, when you see that message, same thing with our TSI polls or just registration, we can all, we can all send those type of messages out. Uh, the next screen is I can even send a message to students after mentoring grades were received. I can look at which ones uh, and what, be very specific to what grading, if they need a D or a F, consider that kind of high risk. So I can look at those students and send a message, hey, you're not doing so well in some of your courses, could you come by our office and we can offer support services for you. So this is a really great little search engine to use to find those students that are performing very well. Uh, and then another thing we have, uh, we can look at, for instance, in the fall after the grades were, were uh, uh, posted, we can look at the ones that have had a D or a C in those development courses and maybe they can look and see what they've registered for the fall, if they've already registered, uh, for the spring, I'm sorry, uh, see what they registered for the next term. Are they in the correct course? Maybe they made a D or an F and they're enrolled in the next level up. They should go back or retest and then move up. And so you can always look at those type of things and then you can address those those issues whenever uh, you find those and then notify the students and tell them you need to uh, either re-enroll in that class. I mean, you can be very specific, but Pulling those students that are in that 0304, 0304, uh, 0304, 0303, just wherever they need to land. And so that's a, a great tool to be able to get those students in the correct courses and get them to drop the one that they're not supposed to be in. Because that can be a problem whenever the next term comes around and they start classes and they're in the wrong class. And then they fell again. So we don't want that to happen. Okay, so that's pretty much in a nutshell what I do with. EAB to help address those students and find those ones that I really need to talk to. So, any questions? Okay. How, how do you remember what to do like every semester? So it seems like you do the same thing every semester. I'm speaking in generalities here. Okay. Um, every semester, but how do you remember to do like the same thing every semester? Do the same thing every semester. Well, uh, one, one reminder, whenever some, when someone is in a course and they should not have reached, have taken that next level and you see those students struggle and they spend so much money on the, the two classes and they have to go back two levels because they weren't successful. Those are the things I worry about because I was a college student and, and money was not there and there's a lot of college students that, that are, are on financial aid they also have have no refund, no refunds coming to them or anything. And so you, you've got to think about we've got to be very financial conscious on what it's going to cost the students. We want them to retest. We encourage the students to retest so they don't have to be in the development courses. Even before they even get here, we send messages to them to make sure that they retest before they get here. And so just look at that, that see the financial burden on students because they are going to have to pay that math. 
And some of our students could take that class two or three times, and we don't want them to do that. We want to make sure that they're successful. And so we want to target those students, and everyone should target the students because we want them to be all successful and get done within a year and be in those college level courses. Did I answer your question? Is that good? Okay, perfect. Any other questions? I have a question. Yes. Um, for the advising reports that are created in EAB, are those notes also being placed in degree works? Yes. What I do is I copy and paste whatever I put in EAB. I have my degree works uh, screen open all the time. Sometimes you have to read because <laughs> you get logged out. You know, you have to refresh all the time. But all I do is I put the, the notes inside EAB, copy, then I paste it into uh, degree works. If there's anywhere else that you need to put it, it's really simple just to copy and paste. It's, it's not hard. I have three screens on my desk. Maybe you don't have that luxury. Sometimes it's confusing. But uh, it's nice to be able to see what, what you're doing. But I always have my other screens open. I have EAB. I have degree works. I have duck tracks open. And just kind of I go through those screens. It's not it's not that hard. It's just, uh, copy, paste. Yes, ma'am. I was going to add one little technical note. We noticed if you go to copy, paste, and you use Control C, Control V, works like a charm. If you try to right click, copy, paste, then people are like, why oh, yeah. doesn't it work? Yeah. Yes. So you know, control C, like Control V. Yes. Yeah. Control C is the copy. The control Going to degree work to me. Paste it back to us. Yes. That's what I use. Yes. But some people think it will be the other way. Okay. But anyway, any other questions? Okay. Anyone else had any other tips, maybe, that they used similar? Okay. Well, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.